Let's define what a wire saw is, what it does, what it can't do, and why you should carry one. First off, I'm not gonna give you a, a wire saw and say, hey, go build me a city. You know, go build a whole village out there. That's not what a wire saw is, that's not what it does. A wire saw is for those moments when you need to cut a thing or a few things and you don't have a saw with you because carrying a folding saw this long is just not something people do on a daily basis. In fact, just yesterday, which was the reason it reminded me to do this video, I was tending to my neighbor's goat herd and one of his goat uh, horns was hooked up in a pallet and I couldn't figure out how to get the goat loose without maybe hurting the goat. So I took my wire saw out. That's a time when I needed to saw quickly, cut through one of the boards, lifted the board, the goat was freed because I had it with me. That's the whole key to kit is have it with you. So obviously the smaller it is, the better it is and the more it lends itself to be carried. So that's the first thing about a wire saw. And uh, like the British SAS, most of those guys, the ones that I know at least, are very passionate about keeping one of these saws in their personal survival kit. So this is my current one. I uh, This is the one that I'm retiring right now. And I'm not sure if it was my idea or if somebody else has done it too or if I invented it, but I take the the metal ring, like the keychain ring that most of the saws come with, and I get rid of that. And I replace it with a short length of parachute cord. Here it's in OD green and here it's in orange. This is my latest modification. I feel like that's probably uh, a better way of doing it. If I lay it down or drop it, I'm more likely to find it, whereas this would blend in easier. And this is not something that needs to be camouflaged anyway. But we just got finished using this one all day, uh, building shelters, doing things like that. And it's held up really well. The ones that I carry, first thing, let's just say this, all wire saws are not created equal. Some don't have barrel swivels, some have little straps, some look like a piece of a chainsaw. Um, the one I use has eight strands of stainless wire, I believe, and it has the barrel swivels on each end that will prevent it from crimping. Um, BCB International, Five Star Gear, several companies out there make them with the, with the barrel swivels. And that's the only kind that I would recommend to you. And the function of the barrel swivel is to keep it from crimping. If you were to, if you were to cause a distinct crimp in this, that's where it's going to break. But with, with the barrel swivel, so you can tangle this thing up however, and then when you pull it open, it will not form a kink. Thus, it will last longer. I have cut through, the reason this saw is hanging here, I'm standing in my, my goat room where I trim my goat's feet, work on them and things like that. And uh, I have this hanging here. I actually do use this to cut off the horns. I have some goats, their horns were removed uh, before I got them and some keep growing back. This one goat in particular, the horn grows back every time and touches his temple and causes pressure. And so I have to cut it off. Hey, Happy, his name's Happy. Uh, he had that name before I got it. And just, just so you know, I despise the practice of cutting off goat's horns. I mean. God put them there, so who am I to change it? But you see this one on his head here. It grows around almost next to his eye, and we have to cut it because he wasn't properly debutted or pulled, whatever you want to call it. And if you can get a shot behind it, you can actually see. I got, I got a massive I know, you did. mongrel in my way here. <laughs> All right, where are we at? Right there. So you see this. I just have to hold his head. Yep. See this area right here? That's what the wire saw cut. Because it grows, it grows around and back back into him. That's right. Yeah. But this is what the horn looked like on this other side. You can see the horn's pretty big. So yeah. for a piece of wire to go through that much bone mass, that's pretty that's pretty solid. So when people, you know, talk smack about wire saws, you know, but you could amputate a leg with it. So to me, that's worth having in a kit. Mm. And this has performed that task several times. Every time that horn grows back, I'll saw it off. And it goes through bone very, very quickly. So if, if anyone were to say, well, that's not, that's not a tool that's worth carrying, I would beg to differ. Can you do that with your folding saw? Through bone? Probably not. I've cut PVC pipe, bamboo, and many different types of wood with it. So for me, it's worth having. Uh, this was the one that I carried in my pocket survival kit until recently uh, and I decommissioned it because it has one strand. I don't know if you can see it, but one of the strands has actually popped up and that happened from the goat kind of flailing around. 
which brings us to the technique of using a wire saw. So let's pretend that I'm going to cut this, this piece of wood here. The way that I utilize the wire saw with these soft loops is I will put, put my pinky finger through like this. Okay. Do that with both hands. And then instead of wrapping around the thing like this, you see some people trying to saw like that, you're causing undue pressure and stress onto the saw. What you want is more like this, more of a straightish kind of pull. So that, that variation in your technique will, will prevent your saw from breaking. Again, this is not something you go out and build a village with. This is a temporary um, tool that you put in a survival kit. And by definition, survival situations are long-term or short-term usually, uh, three days to a week, and then your situation is rectified and you're out of that situation. So the purposes that we would put this wire saw to use in are limited and of a limited duration and time. It would be to maybe build a shelter. It might help me cut pieces of wood to make traps or to process firewood or to, you know, cut through a goat's horn if that's what I need to do. Um, so yeah, I, I do think that they have a place in every survival kit. I'm not saying that uh, they're, they're an heirloom tool that you're gonna hand down to your grandchildren because they're not, they're, they're a short-term solution, but where they shine, they really shine, and there's nothing else that can do what they can do, but it is a very distinct, limited lane that they thrive in. So I think understanding what these are and the philosophy of use, you know, that they are a short-term solution will, will keep you out of trouble, but having one will also get you out of a lot of trouble. I have, I've used mine countless times. Anything that I carry in my pocket survival kit, my wallet kit, the way that it got to be in there. Is it something that I needed more than once? If there was more than one instance in my life where I was like, dang, I really wish I had X, then it got put in the kit. And this saw, I can tell you, has uh, has performed many times when I really needed one. And I was the only guy that had something to complete that given task, be it goat horns, PVC pipe, bamboo for making friction fire, whatever. So I do recommend you get them but I also recommend that you you know what they are and how to best employ them. And certainly they're not all created equal, so get a quality one. And I hope you found that helpful, that distinction. But you, should, I, I highly encourage you to get a wire saw, practice with it, but get the one with the barrel swivels. Uh, one of the reasons that wire saws break is people tend to overheat them. They're not meant to be ran at you know, the, the speed and RPMs of, of an actual machine. So if you slow your sawing rate down just a bit, you know, you will extend the life of your saw. And the one thing that I've seen that they really won't work well against is metal. I, I've tried one time overseas to cut through a bar and it didn't work. Uh, another advantage is if we're tired, our hands are slick, we haven't slept, we're maybe possibly injured, you're stressed out, you're a lot less likely to harm yourself with a wire saw than you are out there swinging some big uh, machete or, or anything like that. So, and they're stealthy. Chop, chop, chop can be heard a long way away, but this zzz, 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 pretty ninja level stealth there. So there's times you don't want to advertise the fact you're there by your noise signature. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself.